One of the many tools I think we neglect in woodworking shops is a steel bench vise. Everyone should have a vise for clamping wood, but at some point, having a metal bench vise is crucial. If you've ever needed to cut a bolt or screw to size or to make a jig that needs a piece of steel, the last thing you want to do is use your wood vise. Today I'll be reviewing this Goner's bench vise that I found on Amazon. While I will be showing off the vise, I have an interesting twist that I really want to show off with it. There's not really a lot that comes in the box and that's okay, we're not building model airplanes here. There are four bolts, four washers with nuts that are included. To install it, place the vise on the edge of your bench. Use a 3 8 brad point bit to mark the whole location and drill each out. There's really not a lot to the install. I will point out that the bolts that come with it are just big enough for a bench top that's three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. If your bench is thicker, measure the thickness of your bench and add a little over an inch, which is the nut, washer, bolt head, and vise mount combined. For my three inch thick table, I'd want four 3 8 bolts that are about four and a half inches long. Make sure you grab 3 8 nuts as the ones that comes with the vise are metric. This setup works if you're setting up a simple multi-purpose garage vise. But if you already have a wood clamping vise, don't bolt this to the table. In fact, with what I'm gonna show you today, put these bolts that comes with it in the spare bolts bucket. You'll want four 3 8 flathead stove bolts that are an inch and a half long, as well as four lock nuts and four screws. The reason you don't want to mount this to your woodworking bench is because woodworking benches need to be completely flat. Anything on the surface of your bench is just gonna get in the way when you have large things that you need to work on. If you have a wood vise, you have all that you need to attach this to your table. To make the jig for this vise, you'll want two pieces of dense hardwood. I'm using Riffson White Oak. My first piece is three quarters of an inch thick, six inches wide and 12 inches long. My second piece is one and a half inches wide by one and three fourths by about five and three fourths long. We'll find the center of the width and draw a line that's six inches up. At the three inch mark, we'll draw a perpendicular line. Use a three eighths drill bit to drill it out and a countersink bit so that our flat stove bolt is flush. Now we'll add the second cross piece, which will obviously fit in the wood vise when we clamp it down. When you switch to some of the more expensive vices, one of the biggest advantages is a second swivel that allows you to turn your stock vertically. But with our jig, we can rotate it upright in the vise and get that vertical position. I wouldn't want to use a hammer to pound on something, but for cutting or drilling, this works. And speaking of drilling, as long as your drill press table is less than six inches from the center, it can be used as a drill press vise, so you're getting two vices in one. If you're interested in making this, I have an entire step-by-step -step build on my second channel that will walk you through the entire process. Rob, I don't have a woodworking vise, which is why I wanted to buy this metal vise. Is there any other way? A second option that doesn't require a vise can be made if you have a three quarter inch hole on your workbench. This will allow you to temporarily add it, giving you a jig to cut steel, and with wood jaw pieces, allow you to clamp wood. To create this, you're gonna use the same jig setup as the last time, except we'll move the second cross piece so that it sits at the end of the jig. After transferring the bottom edge of the hole, I move the line in slightly so that it pinches the jig to the table. Then I drill the hole with the 5 8 bit. When it's time to use this, it pulls the jig tight between the surface and the hole. To remove it, you can either hit the bolt from the bottom or use a flathead screwdriver to free it. Like the last option, you'll find this build on my second channel. Both will be in the description below. I grabbed the Goner's vise as it was lighter and on the cheaper side and has the highest ratings of all the smaller vices that I found. But the important question is, how much value will this bring you to your shop? It really depends on what you want to do with it. For woodworking, if you're looking to use it for glue ups, its jaw width is four and a half inches. Gluing a couple sticks together works, but it's not gonna replace your F clamps. It also has a very shallow throat depth coming in at about three and a quarter inches. These are terrible dimensions for woodworking unless you plan on planing a board on its side or rough sawing. And even then I would make wood teeth for it, something I also added to my second channel video. You're much better off with a woodworking clamp that sits flush with your table. If you're planning on fabricating and heavy duty metalwork, forging, this is also probably not the vise you're looking for. It does have the advantage of being steel forged, so it'll take some abuse like knocking the burrs off of something. 
but I'd have a hard time seeing this in a welder shop unless it were used with a jig where it needed to be portable. If you're like me and do mostly woodworking, but every once in a while need to cut steel, grind, or file the edges off of a pipe, or use it at the drill press, this is where it really shines. With its 10 pound weight and smaller size, it's a very portable vise that can be used and put away in seconds, getting you back to work. I'm really happy that it has pipe jaws below the jawline. My drill press vise didn't have it and there were a few times where it would have been really handy to have it when I drilled things. Here's a really quick tip if you do pick one of these up. Get a really fat washer to put behind the locking bar. I felt like the studs sometimes wedged inside of the notch, making it harder to unlock. This fixed it. You can spend hundreds of dollars on a vise and I spent a lot of money on one years ago, but they're really not going to be versatile and if you're using it on small projects, they're really not that necessary. Overall, I'm, I'm really happy with the vise. I think every woodworker should own something like this, especially as a bench appliance. After adding a hole, I hang it on a dowel under my workbench. It's lightweight enough that I don't have to worry about it. This vise will replace my other vise as it will be much more convenient to use. And before anyone rushes to the comments to point out that steel shavings are terrible for woodworking benches, grab a bench magnet appliance and clean up the surface when you're done. Easy. If you do decide that you want to pick one of these up, you can get it through Amazon, but make sure you hit the coupon button to get a discount. I was able to go to the company and talk to them and they gave me a 20% discount you can get if you go to their website. I'll leave all of that information in both a pinned comment and in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'd like to thank my patrons that help keep the lights on. If you're interested in becoming a patron, I have a link in the description as well. Thank you. Michelle B, Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Zach Finch, Rich Lightfoot, Tudor the Barbarian, Mike Laurinaitis, Les N, and Gary G. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. And I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at Make Things with Rob. And remember to keep making things.